Victory puppies! I don't have treats or an actual dog here, but my girlfriend, my wonderful girlfriend, say hi. Hi. <laughs> Got me this, uh, this pillow of my dog, Hannah, who I have a whole video on. Um, but victory puppies. The penguins win. The penguins win 3-2, not after 60 minutes. This is a four-game win streak for the penguins right now, and finally... The first regulation win. We're what? Six, this is our sixth game of the season. The Penguins did not have a regulation win until tonight. So same lineup, like in terms of, you know, who's playing, but a completely different line combinations. Evan Rodriguez is still on the first line. He probably won't be next game, given the fact that he may be hurt for a decent bit. McCann moves up to the second line now, bumps Zucker down to the third line. Jankowski and Tana moved down to the fourth line, and Bluger's now our new third line center. Kapanen's on the third line as well, and Rust um, is up with Crosby and Gensel eventually at, towards the end of this game. So Sevier, uh, Jankowski, Tanov on the fourth line. Same defensive combos in Jari versus Shesterkin in this one. Overall, the first period, there wasn't a lot to hate, but there wasn't a lot to like. It was kind of a vanilla first period overall. We only saw one goal scored, which was a tip-in shot from a minor league player. Um, it was, you know, nothing to complain about, but nothing to praise at the same time. Um, the Penguins had a lot of offensive chances that they couldn't capitalize off of, specifically with the first line and Evan Rodriguez having a new Dominic Simone treatment where he just can't hit the net. There was one chance tonight where he had a perfect chance in the slot from a feed from Crosby or Gensel and just missed the net. Now... I need a big game out of someone, just someone. The Penguins haven't had a player take over the game, no matter who it is. I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's Sam Lafferty going in the lineup and scoring two goals like he did last year. The Penguins haven't, they, they need something, like a, a good goaltending performance, a, a defenseman scoring a goal and an assist or something like that. There really hasn't been that this year. Now, I'm not overly complaining because, you know, the Penguins did win this game. We got four in a row now. Um, but I still really haven't seen that so far. As I mentioned earlier, Colin Blackwell um, comes up from the taxi squad just a couple hours earlier. Um, that was the story for him. Uh, gets his first goal as a tip and shot. Adam Fox shoots it. Um, nothing much you can do there. He lost a battle in the corner. Point shot. All right. Unfortunate though, but the second or the first period, I didn't hate. I didn't love it either. Now early on in the second, Brian Russ gets a good chance. This is his first of two breakaways on the night. He misses the first one though. He looks good. Brian Rust looks good. A lot of people were saying that, you know, he needs to step it up before last night, before uh, the other night where he actually, you know, finally got his first goal. But still, he was on a four-game point streak. Now it's a five-game point streak um, with the goal that he had tonight. Again, you're, we're getting chances, but we're not capitalizing on them, and we're also just not shooting the puck on them. And it really is the second line that's doing this the most. There's a lot of chances that they're just not taking, and they're trying to be a little too, little too pretty with the puck. Um, we do end up scoring though, but that is not before Philip Cheadle and Evan Rodriguez run into each other. They both leave the game. They both do not return. And a lot of people, again, have criticized Evan Rodriguez saying that he should probably get off the first line. And that's one way to do it is to get him, uh, you know, injured, but obviously you don't want that to happen to anybody. Rodriguez leaves the game. We don't know the status on him. I'm not watching the post game right now. I'm watching the NFL right now. Um, but if Rodriguez is out, then finally Kapanen gets in the top six. But again, not the way you would want it to happen. Um, and then instead of Kapanen being up with Sid and uh, Gensel, he's up with uh, Malkin and Zucker. I liked all of the new line combinations that came out of the Rodriguez injury. I know that's kind of sad that it's a blessing in disguise. Getting a player hurt makes the lines the way you want them. Uh, but the player that does go up and play with Jake and Sid is, is Brian Russ. He gets a second goal. He played a, a good defensive play. Gives the puck to Crosby. Crosby dishes it up to him. He's on a breakaway. And Russ capitalizes. It's 1-1. So the new lines, I mean, obviously, you're, there are no official lines because you have to juggle with a, a guy missing um, in the lineup for the forwards. You got uh, Russ with Crosby and Gensel and then Zucker, Malkin, and Kapanen. I like that. Please continue to do that for the top six. And I also liked Jankowski, Tanev, and... Uh, 
and Bluger. I don't. I think Bluger was playing center there. Jankowski was playing wing. Now, before the period could end, though, and I really like the, the period that the Penguins are having so far, um, Dylan Strom, not Dylan Strom, Ryan Strom, 2-1 um, goal. Uh, he gets his first. It was a net mouth scramble. And that's, again, nothing much you can do about that. Again, I still really like the second period. Uh, and then moving on to the third, in between intermissions, or in between periods, Samuel Poulin got traded. Not in the NHL, thankfully. He's still a Pittsburgh Penguin. He got traded from Sherbrooke, Sherbrooke uh, Phoenix of the QMJHL to Valdor. And guess who's on Valdor? Nathan Legare. So the Penguins' two best prospects are in the same uh, uh, CHL team right now. And I think that's so cool. I was like, oh, that's so... That's... And uh, Nathan Legare on Twitter was like, oh, yeah, I get to play with my childhood friend because they are friends from, from their childhood. And, I mean, hopefully they'll be able to play well there and eventually at the NHL level. Uh, moving back to the actual game, though, Jared McCann, dude, two straight goals in as many nights where he just threw the puck on the net and it went in. This one was more intentional than last night's or two nights ago's, and uh, McCann got a second of the year. Again, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Wayne Gretzky, uh, and the Penguins are tied up in this one. Now, again, he Malkin still, and again, he's so criticized, but still some of it is warranted. He needs to step up. Um, and I, I wrote down someone piss off Malkin because I was just thinking like, well, how do you get Malkin going? You piss him off. And I just, I don't know. Maybe, and I was also like thinking maybe that's a bad thing that we traded away Phil Kessel because Kessel and Malkin didn't get along. So did that motivate him to play better? That's a size of the point, but Malkin not, it was kind of invisible again tonight. And that's, that's kind of a concern for the Penguins. The Rangers are looking very dangerous right now too. Alexi Lafreniere. Uh, looked good. He still doesn't have an NHL point so far. Artemi Panarin looked good. Mika Zibanejad looked good. And their defense just overall looked good. I know people hate Anthony D'Angelo, but he is a good player. Thankfully, the Penguins end it before they go to their fourth straight overtime game, which would have set a franchise high, but it didn't. Uh, Jake Gensel scored, and this is just a great play in what I want to see from the Penguins. You had the, your top defensive pair in Jumal Latang out there. Latang got the assist on this one, and you had your top line, and that is exactly what the Penguins need is contribution from their top six, in this case, their top line. Jake Gensel scores a slap shot from the slot, uh, and the Penguins win this one 3-2 in regulation. Again, first ever regulation win on the season, already six games in. Um, the Rangers call a timeout. They pull Shesterkin just over a minute left. Uh, no, uh, Jankowski almost got a shorthanded or a uh, empty net goal. Nothing though. And yeah, that's four straight wins, four straight home wins. And the Penguins play Boston next on the road. I'm going to start doing my three stars of the game. Um, so I can just pay attention a little bit more and kind of just over, go over who's had good games so far. Um, Brian Rust, I thought had a phenomenal game. He's my number one star. Not only did he play good defensively on that one play, he obviously scored the goal. Um, that tied up or that tied up the game in the second period, and he just has looked good overall. I don't think he's going to lead the team in uh, in points this year or in goals this year like he did last year, but it's really good to see him develop into a great player. Um, and then I have Tristan Jari. Tristan Jari was good at times today. He didn't have a phenomenal outstanding goaltending performance, but he was good when he needed to be. And then Jake Gensel, who scored the game-winning goal. So overall, a 3-2 win for the Penguins. The Penguins improved to 4-2-0. That should say 4 and the Rangers are 1-4-1. One, one. I forgot to update that, but oh well. Um, Penguins, uh, four straight wins. A lot to complain about, but at the end of it, it's a four-game winning streak. So, again, you really can't be too too mad about it. So that is it for this one. Thank you all for watching, subscribing. I'm going to put out some other videos that aren't just PFRs. Um, but if it, that is why you're here, be sure to subscribe, like, comment, all that jazz. Again, if I hit 100 subscribers within the next couple of weeks, I will be doing a Jordan Stahl trade tree, similar to the ones that Steve Dangle does, following how Jordan Stahl helped the Penguins get Carl Hagelin and Derek Broussard and many other players like Jared McCann. So stay tuned for that one. Subscribe for that one. Thank you all for watching. I will catch you next against Boston.